to the playground. Early today, Mayor. Yeah, starting a, starting a new job today, Joe. Where's that? Over at the dairy, part-time well, bookkeeper. Geez. What are I you going to do with Luke here? Oh, my mother's going to take care oh, of him. Honey, they don't have him here. Uh, what happened to the hand there, little fella? Oh, he burned it on the stove. And a crutchy. Honey. I think we have them, Mayor. Oh, no, Joe. Sure, I'm pretty... back in the uh, cereal there. No, Joe, I think you're out of them. Joe, Joe that's Joe. Joe. Let's see how that's possible. See? Right here. Joe, I don't... I don't know how you could have missed them. I don't want him to have them. They're good for him. Look. Vitamins, minerals, energy, sugar. He's got Lots enough of energy. energy as it What's is. your name? Well, sugar never hurt me, no. Luke. 72 years old next year, and I'm just as young as I ever was. I doubt it. What? Nothing, no. It, uh, it's uh, the money. It's a matter of money. You see, the government, oh, you know, the checks they send money, me, it's just not yeah. enough to... Well, I can understand that. I remember we... Back in the Depression, we opened up our till one morning, and all we had was 53 cents. I looked to change a dollar bill. Just my mother and me, then. My father had died Smoke. the year before. Uh, she Smoke. knows something about what it is to raise a family without a breadwinner. Where's your boy? I know. running out of the store. It was only the lady who was carrying him. What lady? What lady? <laughs> what did she look like? I don't know. Sweetheart, are you sure it was Luke? I think so. We got this other What kind of car? What color was it? I don't oh know. My Hello, I'm Emma Lindstedt. I'm her mother. I'm Officer Bender here. We've sent a all points bullet now. Uh, this picture has been sent all over the state. It'll be around the country in a few hours. Is there uh, anyone who might be interested in, in taking the child? No, of course not. The boy's father, maybe? Helicopter crash. Outside of Saigon. <laughs> well, the father's family, sometimes they get jealous. Luke Sr. was an only child. His mother moved to Tampa about two years ago. We haven't heard from her since. She never took any interest in the boy before. I don't know why she would now. We'll still need to check. Be my guest. Well, Jill gave us a pretty good description of the woman. And we're bringing in a psychiatrist, a hypnotist, to help her to try to remember more. If that lady is anywhere in the state, in the Midwest, in the country, we'll find her. All right. I have a little boy myself, Mrs. Browning. I know what you must be going through. Try not to worry. He'll turn up, I promise. sooner with you sitting here. Stop it. I know what you're thinking. That's not the way we get through life in this family. You've got to fight those thoughts, Mayor. You've got to remember what the officer said. This happens all the time. 
They find these children. What if they don't find them? That's enough. I'm making hot chocolate. You want some hot chocolate? I swear, Mary, you're just like your father. You're too soft. You always were soft. Life will get you if you don't watch out, kid. It'll turn out just fine in the end. You've got to believe that. Listen to me. I'm just a tough old bossy bird. It's my fault. It's no, all it's my fault. not. I'm a terrible mother. Shh, Luke would be so ashamed Luke, of me. Don't he... you, honey? I left him alone. Mayor, no. Mother, it's all. I don't deserve to be a mother. Mayor. Luke always said I was careless oh, with dear. the baby. Honey. He fell down the stairs last month. I wasn't watching. You can't. It was my fault. Look at this. Oh, he could have hurt himself. That yes, would have been yes, my fault. Yes. I don't deserve to be oh, a mother. Oh, my God. He's dead. He's gone. I killed him. Oh, oh, give me those skins. Dan? Dan! Come here! I think the creep's gonna ask her to marry him. Did I take that personally? Was that merely an observation? Huh? Hey! Clay, what is this, huh? Oh, come on, liberated male pelted by soap opera junkie? Soap opera junkie. Oh. Soap opera junkie. With one thing on her mind. Mm. Mm. Yeah. Popcorn. Boo! <gasps> Who is this? You're supposed to guess. Is it Casper? Hmm. Is it Santa Claus? No. Okay, I give up. Who is it? It's me! Jason! I didn't recognize you. You scared me. Did you come up here all by yourself? No, my mom's down there. Hi, Jill. Hi, Dad. Come on in. I'll give you a treat. Okay. Come on in. It's cold outside. Stay there. I'll be right back. Oh, well, Lily's very proud. Here you are. I already got one of these. Well, bet you don't have it in that color. No, well, goodbye. Happy Halloween, sweetheart. Mmm. You tell your mom to come visit me sometime, okay? Okay. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Stay warm. Here. Thanks, Pat. Show Mommy what you got, sweetheart. Show us thank you. Let's watch the rest of the show. <laughs> now then, what network was that program on? Um, was it uh, NBC? Uh, ABC? CBS? Uh, or was it the educational one? What <laughs> dance? Oh, come on. <laughs> Will you marry me? I've already told you no. I want kids. I want you. Uh. Damn. It's a regular stampede. What am I going to give him this time? <sighs> Yeah. 
What do you want? Hi, Mom. My name's Mark. I'm your son. No. No, you're not. You get out. Get out of here! Hey, what's going on? Hi. Uh, I didn't mean to scare you. I'm her son. This is a joke. It isn't funny. I just hitchhiked here all the way from Idaho. How did you find out her name? Uh, the people that raised me, they saved all these things about me. Here. I don't know why they kept them. I was going through their things when I found them. Maybe this wasn't such a good idea after all. I'm sorry. No, wait. You can come in. I don't remember much until I was six or seven. I was raised by Graham and Gramps. They said they were my grandparents on a ranch in Idaho. Nice, quiet people, name of Woodward. Gramps died when I was 14, and Graham just a few months ago. I was going through their things in the attic, cleaning it out and stuff, when I found these. I don't know why they kept them. They were good to me, Mom. I mean, you don't have to worry about them hurting me or anything. They were real nice. I had about the best childhood any kid could ever have. How'd they get you? I don't know. They told me my parents died in a car crash when I was three. I only remember the ranch. It was a hock up to here by the time Graham died, and after everything was settled, there wasn't much left for me. I'm not here to sponge off you now, Mom. I just wanted to stop by and say hello and move on. See, I'm headed to New York. I'm going to be an artist. Going to art school. You're not my dad, are you? No. Luke Jr.'s father died when his son was 10 months old. Oh, I'm sorry. Do you, uh, do you have any other proof besides these clippings? I have some memories. I remember falling, just falling down these stairs or something. And I woke up in this white room. And I don't know, I must have been pretty young. Two. And this, I don't remember this at all. You got this when you burned your hand on the flame of the gas stove. You were reaching for something and I wasn't watching you. I remember a word, Mom. Fuzz. Fuzzy something. Buzzy? Yeah, Buzzy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> buzzy. That's your bear. I still have him. I thought I was responsible for everything that might have happened to you, and I was sure you were dead. Or even worse. No. No. I really felt that I had failed. You? And your father? Oh, your father was such a 
brave, careful man, and I have been so stupid and so careless. <laughs> but you're, you're all right. You're, you're here. That's right. And you're all right. That's right. Yeah. I'm right here, and I'm fine. Yeah. <laughs> Mom, they were good to me. Graham and Gramps, listen to me. They were the best. I had fields to run my horse pepper in. And I had lots of animals. Lots of love. You had nothing to worry about, Mama. Everything was great. What do you think? They're a little big, but thank Dan for them anyway. Yeah. So that's... that's my dad? Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. What, are, what are those? Well, he got those during the war, and... this one came later. How'd he die? <sighs> Saving some friends. Any resemblance is purely coincidental. No. You have his eyes and his smile. <laughs> oh. Buzzy? Buzzy. Oh. <laughs> hey there, good buddy. Long time no see. <laughs> Mom, would you do me a favor? What? Tuck me in. <laughs> come on, tuck me in, tuck me in, tuck right, me in. Come on, up, up, up. Oh, I think I've grown some. Well, we'll get a bigger one in here. <laughs> come on, don't worry about it, okay? I'm not going to be that long anyway. Come on, I want you to tell me about Dad. Oh, well. How'd you meet him? Local college. He was sophomore class president and I was a lowly freshman. We had a class together. We fell in love. When'd you marry him? six months before you were born. No, it was his idea. I didn't force him. Did you love him? Very much. Did you love me too? Hey, come oh, here. <laughs> I guess he remembers me. I know you don't believe him, Dan. Any kid could have the memory of falling down the stairs. It's, it's, it's not very specific, Mayor. And that burn on his hand, that's a very bad burn. Well, he, it's hard for Dan, me to believe. Dan, that, he was two and a half years old. It was a big flame in a little hand. And Buzzy? I mean, he could have gotten that name from anywhere. Maybe it was even mentioned in the clippings. What is this, Dan? Are you jealous? Oh, for God's oh, sake. Oh, really? Another man comes into my life? I'm a little bit but just want you to think twice before you jump to the You've got to be careful, man. Look, maybe they have uh, fingerprint records at the hospital. You know, you could check Dan, them. you're forgetting something. I'm his mother. I know. Maybe you don't believe in this kind of maternal instinct, but I do. If he weren't my child, I'd know that too. Come on, come on, come on, Thornton. Ah. 
Come on, come and get me. Come on, Thorn, come on. Come on, come on, come get me, Thorn. nine months, he moved to Minneapolis from California. Had some business at the Dario where work and he asked me out. How often is he here? Just weekends. It's a pretty long commute from Minneapolis. Hard for him to be here every night. He means well, Mark. He's coming from a pretty sad situation. His 16-year-old son got involved in drugs and started lying to him. Jumped off the balcony right in front of Dan's eyes. Dan blames himself for believing the lies and not doing something to help before it was too late. Don't tell him I told you, okay? Have there been many? What? Other men. After Dad? No. Dan's the first. This is really good. Yeah, it was always your favorite place. Yeah? You ever mm. come here with Dad? Mm. We celebrated our engagement here in the impending new. Anything else, Mayor? Oh, no, Milo, thanks. Oh, done some shopping today, I see. Well, yeah, this young man needed some clothes. Oh, uh, you her new boyfriend? <laughs> Milo. <laughs> Milo, this is uh, Mark Woodward. Mark, this is Milo. Pleased to meet you. My pleasure. Mark's from Idaho. I didn't know you had friends in Idaho. I went to college with his mother. Oh. <coughs> Where in Idaho are you from? Old little town you wouldn't know. Oh, sure I would. I grew up out there. Yeah, where about? Right outside of Boise. Oh, I'm way north. Oh, what town? Emerald City. Oh, sure, that sounds familiar. Sure is pretty country out there. <laughs> Say hello to those Idaho potatoes for me. Thank you, my love. Mom, no. let me. No. Would you quit spending your money on me? Mom, I, I have I, some I, money, I, you know. I haven't spent any money on you in 16 years. I think it's about time I started. I felt so close to you when I was carrying you. Closer than I've ever felt to anybody before. You were part of me. You were growing inside of me. You were like a little stranger within that I loved. Even though I didn't know you and I'd never met you. I had given my life for you. And then when your father was killed, I fell apart. My mother said that it was my fault that you cried all the time. I stopped being a good mother when I lost your father. Is that where it happened? Haven't been in there for 16 years. Yeah, things have changed. Look.
Mr. Woodward? Yeah. Yeah, I'm here. Uh, she'll be fine. She's a little excited, that's all. And in her condition, she doesn't need that. What condition? Yeah, she's going to be a new mother. I'm surprised she didn't notice before. She's a good seven weeks along. Yes. Mom. Congratulations, Mom. Don't tell Dan. Good morning. Good morning. Sorry, I don't have time to fix breakfast for you, Luke. Oh, that's all right, Mom. I found these. Oh, you know, I think I've been that company's uh, main support for 16 years. And look, I want to give you my number at work. If you need anything at all, you can call. All right? Don't be afraid to. There you go. What's that? Oh, oh, I'm trying to find a job. You see, I have to get enough money to make it all the way to New York. Oh, look, no, not yet. You haven't even been here a week yet. What? Wait until Christmas? No, no, Christmas is too far away. Mom. Thanksgiving, then? I want you here, Luke. And if you're looking for work, there's plenty of stuff to do around this whole place. You Mark. Know, you... What? My name's Mark. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Mark. Happy birthday to you. <laughs> what a lucky guy. I get to celebrate two birthdays now. Better be careful of those flames, though, huh? Hey. Oh. <laughs> All right. <laughs> you didn't make a wish? No. I wish, Dan. Mmm. Mmm. Well. Mmm. Thank Dan for the champagne. Thank you, Dan. Thank you, Dan. And, Mom, thank you for this. Oh, your father would have wanted you to have this. That's really from him. Dad, if you can hear me, I love you. First time he saw you, he was home on leave just a couple of months before he died. But I could tell so clearly how much he loved you. Oh, you were such a beautiful boy. Oh, I have some pictures, Dan. I don't think I've ever showed you. Um, let's see. Oh, this is your grandmother. She's in Santa Fe. Now she's coming for Christmas, so we'll surprise her, right? <laughs> yeah, you. <laughs> Look. Your father. My dad. Handsome. Hmm? Oh, what a pretty bride. Well, well thank you. A big day. <laughs> oh, there you are. <laughs> Oh, now you always love the water. <laughs> I used to take you out to the lake behind the house to swim. I could hardly get you out. You still like it? Love it. <laughs> Little baseball suit. <laughs> Why didn't you ask him about the birthmark? Oh, that was a strawberry mark. Those things disappear. He had it when he was two. Oh, come on. I'm not going to ask him to take his trousers down. You're so curious, you ask him. Maybe we should go to the police. No, at least they can check out his story. And what if it is true? Hmm? You know what happens to them? A bunch of those horrible newspapers come in and they beat down the door. I he wasn't hurt. He was raised well. I just don't care anymore who took him. And if he's lying? Don't want to know that either.
Hi. Hi. Sleep okay? Oh, yeah, fine. Just thought I'd get some morning air. You do this every morning? Whenever I can. Getting old. Sometimes it's easier to sleep that extra hour. Dan, why don't you believe me? I mean, Dan, why would I want to do this if she's not my mother? She's not rich, Dan. I'm not going to get any money off her. No, I need love. And so does she, Dan. Now, I'm not going to pretend it's always going to be as nice and simple as this. But come on, Dan, what parent-child relationship is perfect? I mean, you ought to know that. What do you mean? Well, she told me you have a child somewhere, that's all. You do, don't you, Dan? Dan, I'm not saying I'm not her son, Dan. What I'm saying is, is if she can give me the kind of love I've never had, then what's so wrong with it? Wait a minute, what? I thought you said you had that love. Graham? Gramps? You said you had the perfect childhood. I did. You said they were saints. Too good to be true. They were. They are. Fiance lives over by Groves Mill, uh, about 20 miles from here. I maybe you remember her, Mayor Browning? Well, I'm in charge of the whole county here, Mr. Vance. So unless she's a convicted felon. Her little boy was kidnapped from a grocery store 16 years ago. Sure, that I remember. She, um, she has information that he might be in Idaho someplace, a town called Emerald City. Now, who told you that? Someone called her from there just the other day. Now, what did they say? He, um... He was raised on a farm just outside of town. People by the name of, um, Woodward. Old lady was a widow, died a few months ago. When we asked for more information, whoever it was, hung up. Someone's playing a pretty nasty joke, Mr. Vance. There's no such place as Emerald City, I know. Dan, what's that? Fairy tales. Make believe. Dorothy and Toto on the road to Emerald City. Dan. Ah! <sighs> 
Yeah. Hi. How are you? Mom says this will help calm you down. Thanks for saving my life, Dan. Dan, Emerald City was just a fantasy. Graham, Gramps, all of it. It was my canvas, Dan. Because the truth is just too disgusting to believe in. But don't tell Mom, okay? You want proof I am what I am? What? Why didn't you show us that before? It's kind of embarrassing, Dan. I mean, it's not in the most convenient place to show your mom. <laughs> now, come on, tell me about your son. That is who you were thinking about when you were holding me up there, right? I'm sorry you fell. He was a good kid. I wasn't a very good father. I miss him. That's about all there is to tell. Well, Dan, I shouldn't be saying this. It's supposed to be a surprise. But you're going to have another chance. You're going to be a daddy again, Dan. Yeah. <laughs> but listen, let her surprise you with it, okay? <laughs> she loves you, Dan. I love you, too. this man fine thanks all right drumstick please joe clayton called me today her mother's car skidded off the road and she broke her arm oh no uh -huh. yeah this weather's been miserable this is when i begin to miss california <laughs> hey, mom how thick is the ice on the lake oh i don't know probably eight or nine inches oh yeah dan you ever do any ice fishing ice fishing yeah dan you ever try it nope no, there's an ice saw down in the basement. Yeah, we got most of those things when Luke's grandfather died. What do you know about ice fishing? Well, quite a bit. What do you say, Dan? Maybe. Let's say Grace first. Lord, we thank you for this food. And for this day. And for my happiness. And for the gift you've given me. And for Dan. Thank you for Dan's bravery yesterday. And for Mark, for Mira's son, for his coming into our lives. Amen. And for the new little life on its way. Understand what the big deal is. So what if I found out? I am the father, right? Of course. Good, great. I'm happy. Let's get married. I'm not gonna have the baby, Dan. I made up my mind over the weekend. I have an appointment. I'm not in gonna let you do this. You don't have a choice. Why? Why won't you have this baby? I'm too old. Oh, come on. Look, we'll get married. We'll get I don't want to marry you, Dan. Okay. <laughs> I'll 
to raise the kid myself. No. I can't go through any of this again. For a long time, I thought I was a terrible wife and a terrible parent. That was your mother talking. No, it was me and my mother and Luke and, and everything that happened back then. But since then, I've learned that it's strong. But the only way that I can say strong is to say no. I can't put myself in that position again. I won't. The old guy I used to live with, he had a stable of boys, mostly thieving, some of the other stuff. The only mother I ever knew was this hooker used to stay with the old man every once in a while. She'd been raised in the country. She used to take us boys out on the lake sometimes to go ice fishing. She was killed by her pimp in front of us. Ice fishing's about catching the fish when they least expect it. You see, it's too damn cold. They can't believe anybody in their right minds is going to be up here hunting them. But we're not in our right minds now, are we, Dan? Brought you some coffee. Oh, hi. Hi. Oh. Here, it's hot. Hey, Dan, I'm just going to warm my hand up. Oh, okay. I'll have breakfast for you when you get back, all right? Pancakes okay? Great. Forget the pancakes. We're going to be frying fish in a few minutes, Ma. <laughs> okay. Good luck. Mm. Come on, let's go catch us a big northern. You got the bait your own hook, though, Dan. I ain't going to do it for you. Come on, Dan. Get over and help. Gang of thieves, huh? Killed by her pimp. You owe Charles Dickens a footnote, kid. Come on, Dan. Why are you lying to me? Because it's easier than telling the truth. Give it a try. It's a long story, Dan. We've got all day. Forget it. Why are you here? What's your story, Mark? Look, if you don't tell it to me, you're going to have to tell it to the police. Yeah, that's right. I went to them the other day. I told him all about you. For God's sake, kid! Now, if you don't answer my questions, you're gonna have to answer theirs! I'm sorry, Dan. I really am.
okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Lines must be down. We'll take the car. No, Mom. I'll do it. I'll do it. If I get stuck in this ice storm, Mom, I don't want you with me. Here. Here, I want you to drink some of this. Come on. No. Come on. Mom, come on. I know you're upset. We both are. I mean, Mom, I can't help think that Dan's dead because of me. No. It wasn't your fault. Mom, please. Please, Mom, I want you to stay here. And I want you to... I want you to drink this. Come on, go upstairs and get out of those wet clothes. Put a nice dry robe on. Come on. That's a girl. That's a girl. That's a girl. Reach Klondike 53545. I'm having trouble with the connection. I'm sorry, sir. That line is out of order. Thanks. See you tonight, Dad. What's your supper? Uh, you got your choice of turkey, turkey, or turkey. 
peanut butter and jelly. Hey, Phil. What? Getting over to Groves Mill? Yeah. I want you to check something out for me. Down here. You're supposed to be up in bed. But the power lines are down all over the place. All right, now get up to bed. I had an accident with the car about a half a mile down the road. I'm all right. But about the only way I'm going to get out of here tonight is on foot. Not now, though. It'll be dark soon. I'm not leaving you here alone tonight. He didn't feel a thing, Mom. As soon as he hit the water, he was numb. He was really upset about your fight last night. He's drinking an awful lot. He took a sip of your coffee, burnt his mouth, spilled it on himself, lost his balance, and fell in. Hey, what were you fighting about anyway, huh? Well, whatever it was, whatever you said to him that set him off like that, you really should have talked to him this morning. It was my fault. <laughs> no. Listen, don't be paranoid. It was an accident. All I'm saying is if you, you know, talk things out with him, made the coffee a little less hot, any one of a dozen little things, events might be different. But you can't control those things, Mom, so just don't think about them. I mean, it's like Graham and Gramps. There was a lot I might have been able to do to save them. But still, it was mostly an accident. You said they died years apart. Did I? No. You see, there was three of us. John, he was the oldest, then Matt. They both kind of remembered the past. Not me, though. Thought I'd always been there. Graham loved little boys. That's why she took us, you know. Because she was so happy when there was a little boy around. The problem with little boys is they grow up. Gramps drank a lot. He used to beat us and stuff. Well, oh, but you don't want to hear about that, do you? We didn't have any friends. You know, we missed all the school. And John started to remember a different family, a better home. I mean, Mom, you don't know how bad things are until you remember they were better ones, right? They always told everyone we were their grandchildren, but John didn't believe them anymore. He was digging around in the attic one day, and he came across these old newspaper clippings, and he said to Gramps, I'm going to the police, and Gramps just hit him, knocked him down. The next day, they told me and Matt that John had run away, and we weren't supposed to talk about him. And we weren't supposed to go in the root cellar, either. But we did. And that's how we found out where they buried him. Matt tried to run for help, but Grant caught him. They locked me up in the attic. And even up there, I could hear him screaming. <laughs> Later that night, found some matches, and there was a fire. And by the time help came, Graham and Gramps were dead, and it was just me.
the hardest part was afterwards when they put me in foster homes and I got to see all the love that other kids had had I never missed it until then but now I have you Browning in? Uh, she's not feeling well. What do you want? I just wanted to ask her a question. I can do it tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, I, I saw a car off the road up a ways. Is that yours? Yeah. Everyone okay? Yeah, just fine. Yeah, I couldn't get my own car up the hill. I had to walk all the way up here. Good night. Yeah. No, wait, wait, where are you going? Oh, Mrs. Browning. He's in the lake. What? He slipped and fell on the ice. Didn't you kill him? Mom, the would you calm down? We don't have a phone. Who are you talking about? Dan. Dan's in the lake. Calm down, Mom. Go inside. Come on, I'll show you. Here, I'll show you. It's her husband. See, my stepfather. He drowned a few years ago when they were on a fishing trip. She blames herself. That's really all there is to it. She gets like this when she's had too much to drink. See? Nothing. Oh, what's that? Oh, I went ice fishing this morning. You ever try it? Yeah, when I was a kid. It's fun, ain't it? Why don't you come on back sometime? Do it together. Well, I wouldn't leave your poles out there. Oh, no, I'm coming back out as soon as I fix the power up the house. We blew a fuse in the basement. You know, this is really all my fault. I shouldn't have let my mom drink like that, you know? She, she drinks so much and then she just loses her head. I understand. You went to call him for help. Fill up the ambulance here as soon as possible. Mom, it's gonna be all right. It's gonna be fine. Why didn't you tell him about Dan? I did. No, he was going away. He was going for help. He was going for help, Mom. Dan is dead, Mom. What does it matter when they take him out? He's on ice! He'll keep! He will keep! Yeah, Dad, I'm stuck in the mud down the hill for Mrs. Browning's. Something's weird. The phone's out, the electricity's out. She was going on about someone drowning in the lake, but it's frozen solid. Her son said she'd been drinking. Her son? Yeah, I know. I didn't have to ask about him. He's already there. We get back there and find out what's going on. I'll send in some help. I can handle it, Pops. They're not dangerous, just a little drunk. Okay, but I want to hear from you in 20 minutes. I'll give the power company a call. And look, don't try and be a hero. Don't worry, Pops. I'll be fine. It's too gloomy. I need to light this place up a little bit. Mom, come on. Dan wouldn't want you looking so down in the mouth. How did Dan fall into the lake? I've already told you, Mom. He was drunk and he Dan in. wasn't drunk! What is this, Mom? Why don't you believe me all of a sudden, huh? You know, you may be upset, but I'm upset too, Mom, because I was there. I know. Dan was upset and he was drinking because of you, Mom. All right? He was upset about what you were going to do with your baby. Why did you tell him about the baby? You promised you wouldn't. What is with all these questions, Mom? Why did you Mom? tell him about the baby? I didn't tell him about the baby, You're all right? You're lying. I don't lie, Mom. So don't try to blame what happened to him on me, all right? What set Dan off is when you told him what you were going to do with the kid. How do you know what I was or wasn't going to do with that baby? Because I heard you, Mom. I heard both of you arguing about it, all right? And listen, I'm not blaming you, Mom. You have no reason to have another kid, all right? Some people just weren't meant to be parents. I mean, let's face it, Mom, all right? You knocked me down the stairs. No! You burned my hand. God knows what else you did to me before you lost me! And now you got a little kid inside of you, Mom, and I can see what you're gonna do to him, all right? If you're such a lousy parent, Mom, then how could you get knocked up again? I think about that little kid in there, Mom. I think about what you're gonna do to him, and I think, man, that he is lucky compared to me, because you killed me slowly!
But don't worry, Mom. I'll get over it.
What's up, mommy? Get out! Get out! I can't do that, mom. Get out! But this is my home, mom. You don't want to kick me out of my home, do you? This is not your home! <laughs> No, he won't. Yes, he will. No, he yes, won't. And he'll bring help. He will not, Mom. He's gone. You're not my child. Don't call me, Mom. I don't know where you came from, and it sure as hell wasn't from me. And what makes you think that, Mom? <laughs> You've been snooping around, haven't you, Mom? Starting to take after me. <laughs> After the fire, Mom, after Graham and Gramps were dead, I got to thinking about why they killed John and Matt and not me. And then I knew it was up to me to make it all even. But, but then I found you, and I didn't want to believe anything bad about you, Mom. John's parents, they were different. You know, they deserved to die. But I loved you. You know, I needed you without Dan. Without your little bastard inside. <laughs> you're doing what are you gonna do with me what do you think i should do to you mom huh what, what do you think mom should i give you what you deserve ah! Ah! i'm gonna give you one more chance mom you know what i'm gonna do to you i'm gonna give you one more chance to be a good mother that's what i'm gonna do i am a good mother oh no you're not are you mom you mom unit seven please respond Phil, you out there come on base to unit seven come on where's my son Did you know him? What are you talking about, Mom? Did they hurt him like they hurt you? 
I'm your son, Mom. Oh, come on, all right? Be a good mom. Please, make up for some lost time. Why don't you make up for everything I never had? Make some hot chocolate, all right? Tell me some stories. Bake a cherry pie. I love cherries. You got cherries, Mom? Anything! Just give me what I missed! I love you, Mark. Oh, no, you don't. You don't love me. Do you? Really love me? You really love me? You really love me? No, I don't. You never loved me, did you? No. Why? Because you were a bad mommy, right? Yes. Say it. Because I was a terrible mother. And you should die for that. Right! Right? You and your new little boy. That's a nice motherly thing to do, right? Here. Got any cocoa? Come on. Tell me a story. Tell me what a good little boy I was. You were a good little boy always. Go on. Well, you were good. And you were smart, just like your daddy. And your favorite fairy tale was Hansel and Gretel. I used to read it to you every night. And one night when I was tired, you said, I'll read it to you, Mommy, and you did. It was amazing. You were three years old, and you could read. And then I realized that you'd heard it so often, you'd memorized it word for word. You were always very clever, Mark. Todd, uh, tell me about the time I fell. I was watching television. You wandered to the top of the basement stairs, and uh, we had to go to the hospital for stitches. Whose fault was that? It was mine. But you were all right. Tell me about Dad, Ma. Tell me about you and him. Tell me about why you let him get you pregnant with me. I loved him. Yeah, but he didn't love you, did he? You pushed him into marriage, didn't you? <laughs> he gets you pregnant and runs away to Vietnam. He didn't want to be around you, Mom. No, that's not why he went to Vietnam. He comes home, he sees me, he falls in love with me, and you were jealous, right? No. Yes, don't deny it, Mom. That's why you lost me, right? That's why you pushed me down the stairs. That's why you sold me. Isn't it, Mom? You hated me, Mom. Say it. You hated me. Say it. I hated you. I care about you, Mark. I'll do anything I can to help you. Just let me have this baby. For Dan and for me. 
I want to be able to do things for it. That I couldn't do for you. It's too late. It's too late. Where's my hot chocolate? You got marshmallows, I hope. I always like marshmallows, right? Yeah, they're in the refrigerator, and please put the milk back before it spoils. I don't see them, Ma. They're in the back. You're a sly one, I'm, uh... Go on. Shoot me. Show how much you hate me. Kill your own son. You're not my son. Thanks, Mom. I guess that proves it. You can hurt me, you can lose me, you can throw me away. But you can't kill your own flesh and blood, can you?
Well, what do you know? Mom's awake. It's almost time to go back to bed again, Mom. Time to put the bad old mommy back to bed. I love my son. What's that, Mom? I love my little boy more than anything. Yeah, yeah, sure you did, Ma. When I was in labor, I prayed to God to take me, but to spare him. And when I lost his father, I poured all my love into him. Keep it up, Mom. You're not winning any votes from this corner. Not from John, and not from Matt, and especially not from me. still worked pretty good for a while, right? Yeah. Oh, don't take it too hard, Mom. I wanted to be your son. We can still pretend, can't we? Where's Luke? Is Luke the boy they called Matt? I'm sorry, Mom. I loved him, too. Who are you? I don't know. It's just it. I don't know who I am. No more bedtime stories. It's time to go to sleep.
can't do it, Mom. You can't. I may not be your son, but I'm someone's. They got me here as fast as they could. You're going to be all right. Baby. Fine. It's going to be fine. Mark. <sighs> You're a brave woman, Mary. Good mother. Yes, and a good mother. <laughs> <laughs> 